the aim of today is to basically debate as many of the issues we want to do uh, about this subject as possible. I've seen some very, very bad installations and I've not really had the time, the opportunity to need to investigate it for any of my projects. So up until today, my opinion was all LED tubes are bad. I guess I'm probably maybe have learned that possibly they're not all as bad as I thought. The re return on investment for um, a complete fitting just wasn't there. So the only available technology in the market was the, the LED tubes. So we, we looked heavily into it and um, did lots of investigations on which were the right ones, uh, drove the price down with certain manufacturers and uh, we've actually retrofitted them into 40 stores now successfully. Your safety is one of the, one of the biggest concerns, um, you know, so how do you select a safe product? Safety was a massive concern and we did a lot of investigations uh, to the tune of actually getting the tubes and deconstructing them within the office and just looking for every um, defect that may be there or, or potential danger. In the lighting industry safety is always a risk and always an issue and whenever new products come in, particularly from new emerging markets, then there's going to be a risk that those products don't comply with the safety uh, standards that we're used to in, in Europe and particularly in the UK. So safety has been an issue. I think in general that's uh, a, another issue which is starting to, to fade away but we've got to be ever vigilant to make sure that our standards are maintained and that the public aren't exposed to products which are dangerous. There isn't clear communication. You and the majors are trying to keep the standards up. I absolutely agree with that. But that's just one very small example. Please, you know, let's have life for life. Yeah, I think there's a, a huge reliance on the manufacturers to give proper guidance on how these products are, are used and installed. There's too much uh, inconsistency and variation between between tubes and uh, a degree of standardization is certainly going to be required if they're going to be sort of a mainstream re uh, replacement for fluorescent lighting. Well, you know, we're starting to see more and more applications, so this seems to be a one that the, uh, the, the supermarkets and the retailers are one of the ones, we know that cold storage uh, was one of the early, one, one of the early The ideal application for LED tubes is where there is no money for capital investment in renewing the luminaires themselves and where there is a good case to be made for energy reduction or more importantly maintenance reduction. It's the maintenance savings that LED tubes have the greatest potential to reduce costs on. The directional nature uh, is obviously a big change over the fluorescence to replace so this can help in, in applications that, that benefit from directional lighting so signage uh, and, and uh, you know, previously enclosed fixtures that relied on reflectors to, uh, to place the light where it needs to be. LED tubes as they are today would be best suited to cold storage applications, um, also uh, warehouse applications where the light must be directed imme immediately downwards, but also um, uh, car parks. Car parks is a, is a great example of where to use LED tubes, um, especially in weatherproof fittings, absolutely perfect. But there's, there's a lot of applications that we could select LED tubes for, but it's important to perhaps consult the manufacturer or your lighting consultant to make sure that it is the right application. Obviously retrofits aren't new, uh, you know, there's even been you know, T8 to T5 replacements in the past and LEDs are just a new, a new product to add to that mix. Yeah, it's obviously end user knowledge is very important um, so you know, I find um, at the university we're all up to date with the latest technology, so not just me, but other members of my team are, you know, we're, everyone needs to be aware of the good, the bad, and the ugly, I suppose. Uh, I mean, from, from what we heard today, there's, there's, there's a lot of product coming into the market, particularly from, uh, from Far Eastern manufacturers. I would say that you need to uh, uh, work with manufacturers that you trust uh, and, and that are there to, to back the product up, that, you know, should, should something go wrong in the future. There are some misconceptions I would agree, but also I think there's, there's been some people who have been misled into using them in the wrong applications um, without really considering the light levels required for the application. Now if, if the lighting is specified correctly and a good lighting design is done, LED tubes can do a good job. I, I've, I've said it many times, LED is not for every application, but in the right application it does a perfectly great job. Suddenly we have lots of people who never cared about lighting at all. 
are interested in lighting because of the LED revolution. Things are moving on. Uh, manufacturers are now starting to design fittings for the LED modules. Um, th things are getting more efficient, but no, I think it was the right choice when we did it at the time. And I'm not, it's not to say that we won't actually be fitting more LED tubes, but it will be in bespoke situations where we can't get things that's, um, that, that's got a decent rate of return. I think we're going to see a lot more LED tubes as the efficiency improves and then we'll start talking about things like uh, fully omnidirectional tubes and the application space is going to, uh, is going to increase. We, we're seeing some developments on the driver side of the technology which should enable LED tubes to be used not only on magnetic systems but electronic control gear as well. Once that is um, tackled, it opens up the scope for the LED tube to new applications such as indoor lighting in offices, but also if we can tackle the omnidirectional aspect of, of the light output, it will open up the scope for LED tubes. An appealing side of it is this ability to remove just one component part of it and to upgrade it or replace it.